it's time for you to create your first instrument. Now, in order to do that, you need samples. Now, those samples can be audio files that you've grabbed by using a microphone out in the wild or sampling of an instrument you may have in your studio. Or if you have factory libraries or sample libraries that you've purchased, you can find samples in those libraries and build instruments from them. And throughout this course, I'm going to be using a lot of the samples that come with Contact and Complete. So in order to find those samples, we need to get to the library of samples on your hard disk. So I'm going to go to my Files tab in my browser and find my Native Instruments folder. Mine is on a second hard disk. And within that, I'm going to find the Factory Library and the Samples directory. Now within the Samples directory, I'm going to scroll down and find a nice synth by going to the first Factory Library, Synth within that, Lead Samples, and then we'll find a nice Super Saw sample. Now down below, I see all of the individual waveforms or samples that make up the instrument Super Saw. We're going to use some of those samples so I can see what they sound like by clicking them. And as long as I have auto enabled, I will hear the sound. The easiest way to create an instrument is for me to drag one of these samples out into the main area here. And there it is, SuperSaw 1057A2. Let me close the browser up. And if I play this instrument now using my keyboard, it actually sounds like a saw synthesizer. Now that's pretty amazing since all I did was bring out a single sample. How does that happen? Well, let me click the wrench. I'm going to go to the mapping editor and that's where I can see the one sample that I brought in has been spread across the entire range of the keyboard. And you'll see a little red line where I play my external keyboard. Well, those of you with perfect pitch will probably realize that this key, the C that I'm playing on my keyboard, is actually playing an E. So why is that? Well, it turns out that when Contact brought that sample in and made an instrument, it thought that sample was a C3, even though it says very specifically here it's an A2. We'll find out later how to read from the sample name and put it in the right place. But right now it's in the wrong place. It thinks it's a C3 sample. And I can tell that by looking at this right here, root. You can also see the yellow key. That's where it placed the sample. What we need to do is make the root be A2. So I can change it here using the little arrows. I can type it in. Or I can actually just drag this note here, this yellow note, down to here. And now when I play my C, it's actually a C. Now this big yellow range is called a zone. A zone shows where a sample starts, the start part of the range, which is C negative one, and the end part of the range, which in this case is B7. Now I can drag the edges of the range for example, I can make this particular sample play from C2 to B2. I'm out of the range and there's no sample being triggered. Just like with the root key, I can set the range by dragging or by typing in my key range area or by using the up and down arrows next to the key range, low or high position. I can also change the velocity at which my sample is triggered. And I do that by dragging the top or bottom of the range or using my velocity range right up here in the control strip. Now let's say I bring this down to 63. That means if I play something between C2 and B7, As long as the velocity is below 64, 1 to 63, it will play. But if I play something louder or harder than velocity 63, you can see the red line up there, but there is no sample. 
So I would need to put another sample up there if I wanted to hear sound. Now for every zone, I can set a volume, a pan, left or right speaker, and a tuning. But I typically do not want to do this here unless there's something about this particular sample I want to tweak. But just to give you an example, let me go back to my browser and I'll bring in another sample. In this case, I'll bring in a melody lead. So I'm going to drag out another sample here. It's an A2, so I will place it directly over A2. And you can see my root key is A2, the note is A2. So that's playing perfectly right. Now let's go ahead and take that A2 zone, this synth that I just dragged out, and pan it all the way to the left. And I'll take this sample and I'll pan it all the way to the right. And I'm just dragging with my mouse the pan area. Now watch what happens when I play A2. You hear the super saw on the right and you hear the other lead sample in the left speaker. Now there are many other ways of handling panning and they can be very complex. The same with volume, the same with tuning. So as I said, this is probably not the best way to do this unless there's something about this particular sample, this particular zone that I want to tweak. One last thing, I can always play a sample from the keyboard on screen. The higher I play, the lower the velocity. The lower I play, the louder the velocity. Finally, I'm going to save the instrument. Good idea to always save the instrument. I'm going to rename this and call it My First Instrument. Click the floppy disk, a little bit outdated icon, but it means save. And I have an instruments folder I've created, and I'm going to stick it right in there. It has an NKI suffix, which means it's a contact instrument. Click Save. We're done. So that's how I created my first instrument. In the next tutorials, I'll tell you lots more about creating instruments in contact.